Hi, my name is Diane Cajoli, and I'm the Community Service Librarian here at Paul Sawyer Public Library. And I'm Cindy, and I'm one of the reference librarians here at Paul Sawyer. And today, we're going to be presenting Gingerbread, Gingerbread House SOS. SOS. Now, if you're anything like me, you have a memory from childhood or from a another point in your life when you had a Christmas or holiday baking fail of some sort. Mine happens to be from my childhood when my mother and I decided to build a gingerbread house. And it, it was an epic fail, Cindy. It really was. I feel like I've been scarred from this. <laughs> and now, as an adult, I ha since that time, I still have not um, revisited the gingerbread house. I've been too scared to do it um, because of that experience. So as the holidays um, kicked off this year, I thought, who can help me make sure that this year my gingerbread house is a complete success and that it is so structurally sound <laughs> um, and beautiful that it's going to last through the holiday season and into the new year. And I knew that Cindy could do that for me. She's kind of a resident baking slash gingerbread expert. I try. Yeah, I, uh, I've never had a gingerbread house fail so far. Good. Um, <laughs> And I've done a lot of baking, so I did some experimenting, and I think I have a bunch of really good tips to make sure that the house that you make actually looks good, tastes good, and stays up. Fantastic. All right. So we're going to get into assembly and construction in a minute, because that honestly is the biggest thing that you have to focus on. Um, and it's just a lot of patience. Um, but beforehand, you do have to make your gingerbread something that's going to it's gonna stay. It's construction grade gingerbread. Um, so you bake it a little bit longer than you would normally. It's a little bit thicker. It's usually about a fourth of an inch thick. You can hold it, um, give it a tap. It's nothing's gonna happen to it. Can I eat this? Yeah, it's totally edible. Um, I do recommend that if you wanna eat those, you dip it in some hot chocolate or some coffee or some tea or whatever, cause it is, it's tough cause it's meant to last. This is very sturdy. Yes. You can hear me tapping on this. <laughs> um, and then you also want to make sure that your royal icing, this is our royal icing, is also very sturdy and very strong. I use egg whites just because that's what I use, but you can use meringue powder. And for that, the biggest thing is just making sure that you've whipped it up really well so it has stiff peaks. But if you give it a, a tap, it's going to stay. <laughs> it's a very good royal icing. And then if you want to make sure that your gingerbread stays looking pretty and you can cover all the gloopiness in the royal icing, you're going to make some crusting buttercream. And that's usually you put it in the fridge, it chills for like 20 to 30 minutes and it gets a nice crust and it kind of doesn't move anymore. And then you can add stuff on top. Hmm. All right. So we, are you ready to begin assembling? I, I'm absolutely ready. Now, one question for you. Mm -hmm. um, all of these recipes that we're using today, mm -hmm. how can folks access those? We're going to put them in the comments on the video so that you can find them because I've got a good recipe for your construction gingerbread. I've got a good recipe for raw icing and I've got a good recipe for crusting buttercream. Mm -hmm. So we'll have all of those in the comments ready to access. Also, at the conclusion of our construction portion, um, Cindy is going to do a little bit of a tutorial on making your own royal icing. So if you need help with that, stay tuned. Uh, be sure to watch until the end of the video or skip ahead. Yeah, but let's start assembling. That's great. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to assemble all your pieces. Um, these are the things that you have already uh, cut out and baked. You've let them cool for a while. You never want to work with hot gingerbread because it's it's just gonna it's gonna accordion down uh, and it won't stay together and all the royal icing will goop on out. You also want to make sure that your icing is fairly well chilled so it's cool to the touch um, but it's still like movable and everything. Okay and this part it's just gonna take a lot of patience 
so honestly making gingerbread houses isn't great to do um, with patient people like children or if you're very tired or anything like that because you are going to make mistakes. Mm. Uh, but what I want you to do first, Diane, is we're going to take our little front door here and you are going to goop a generous amount all along that edge right there. A generous amount of royal icing. Okay, is there any technique with the bag, uh, with the piping bag, if somebody hasn't used one before that you would suggest? So you do want to hold it the way you are right now where you're kind of keeping the back end closed. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you kind of want to try to squeeze from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're using a bag like this where you cut the tip off, don't cut too terribly much. Cut a small amount because it will just goop everywhere. Uh, you also might notice that this bag had a hole in it, but it worked fine. So just give it a good squeeze. Yeah, that's good. And then you can either place it onto parchment paper, uh, but I don't like that because it gets up. I just like to put it directly on butcher block. Okay. And so wherever you want it, if you want to make like a display, I recommend just sort of putting it somewhere a little bit back. And then you want to get some form of structure. I like these particular glasses because they are narrow on the bottom and wide on the top. So I can put them directly against the gingerbread and they won't get into the royal icing at the bottom. So you hold it like that. Hmm. All right. We should be able to do a second piece of gingerbread. You want to do one of the sides. You're going to do like front, side, side, back. And for this, you're going to place it inside the house, not outside. Uh, I think it just works a little bit better that way. So that means okay. you're gonna want royal icing on one side and the bottom. Okay. Okay. And it's okay if the royal icing is goopy. Oops. Oh. <laughs> we'll cover that later. See, this is this is why we're doing this. <laughs> This is real time. This is uh, okay. So uh, if if this happens, the so it looks like there was just some extra royal icing that got out um, from the little gooseneck at the top. This is going to end up being a messy, messy thing anyway. Um, so if that happens, just kind of try to resituate it. I'm just going to put it inside the house because okay. you won't see it when the roof goes on. And then twist it back. We twist it back. Okay. Keep going. So make sure that stays twisted. Yep. Also, always great to have paper towels and stuff nearby. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to pop that, back, pop that back in there. And then you're going to put it down on the side and press it in. All right. Cindy, is it good to have a second pair of hands like we're doing this together today? It is really helpful because that way you can make sure that you're pressing from different angles um, and you don't have to worry about doing this all on. You should be able to let go. Awesome. All right. And if you see kind of the way I've positioned my glasses and everything, I tried to make sure that I had some on multiple sides so you're getting equal pressure. If you get a lot of pressure on one side, it could either fall over before it finishes setting, or it could just be like lean a lot, which I mean, you know, old houses lean. So maybe your gingerbread house <laughs> is vintage, <laughs> but we need to let this set for at least five minutes. What I do at this point is I just set a timer and I leave it. If you have small kids or animals, you might want to cover it in aluminum foil, but you can just take five minutes, chill for yourself, maybe clean up some stuff. Sounds good. All right, so we've given it a good amount of time to set. It's not fully set or anything, um, so I wouldn't really mess with it too terribly much, um, but it has started to adhere to itself, which means we can add another one. So since we're gonna be adding it to this side inside, you're gonna do the bottom and one side. Okay. 
And I recommend kind of looking at them and seeing, you know, is there a side that looks a little bit flatter or whatever? Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom. Yeah. All right. And so kind of twist the top of your thing. All right. squish that lined up over there that's lined up pretty well I think chances are it's not gonna be perfectly straight let's get it you can let go okay it adheres together pretty easily so you can be fairly gentle with it and since it's not fully set you can keep kind of fiddling with it so we could probably just sort of leave it as it is now um, but if you can get more glass work just to, to keep making sure that it stays really well, I recommend doing so. You could also, um, if you see on the edges where it's a little bit, there's not a lot of royal icing on the outside, you can add more, like I'm going to do right here. Now, Cindy, in between um, letting this sit um, mm -hmm. to set up, uh, should we pop our icing back in the refrigerator? If you can, yes. Like if there's a fridge anywhere near you, I would recommend it. Um, because royal icing is okay to leave at room temperature, but it will just get runnier and runnier. Um, and it might take a little bit longer to set. You do set it at room temperature, so it is fine. But cooling it prevents it from getting really runny. Okay, great. All right. So once again, just gonna leave this for about five minutes. Honestly, it looks like it's, it's holding up pretty darn well. So good job. <laughs> so we've got three of the sides done and it's just just one more. It's not going too bad, is it? No, this is, this is much, <laughs> much better and much easier um, than I thought it would be. Yeah. So just gotta have the right materials and the right instructions. <laughs> and also just go slow. Yes. <laughs> okay. So for this one, um, normally, you know, we've been putting um, royal icing on the edges, but you don't really want to kind of mess with that. So you'll just be putting some royal icing inside on these two sides, as well as on the bottom. Just in, just get the cap all twisted nice. There you go. We're gonna remove that. So insides here mm -hmm. and bottom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Be fine, you won't see it on the inside. <laughs> there you go. All right. And if you'll help me line that up on the other side. Okay. Pretty good. There you go. It's good here. Just kind of squeeze it in gently. Yeah. One thing I think is that you usually go a little top heavy and you want to make sure that the bottom presses. Mm -hmm. So the bottom can kind of lean in and the top can lean out that's okay as long as you have the stability on the bottom right yeah okay all right it's pretty good and the nice thing about having the other three walls up at this point is that they kind of start to support each other now, this is the part where you're probably going to end up getting sort of impatient because while we've only been able to wait about five minutes between them, if you really want to put on the roof, you have to wait like at least an hour. You have to let it actually start setting up and crusting. Otherwise, when you add that extra weight, it's just going to collapse. <laughs> so just go start a movie, do something. You'll be fine. All right, so we've let it rest for at least an hour. If you can do more, that's good. Um, honestly, what I did, what I do when I make it is I go and I assemble all this in the morning and then I just do whatever I'm gonna do and then I do the roof at night and just leave it that way. 
because you're also not going to be able to assemble this probably day of unless you start at like 8 a.m. Question for you. Um, when you're letting this set up, mm -hmm. um, should you put it in like a cooler spot? Um, does that matter at all? Room temperature is fine. Um, but if you're doing like a lot of baking, like it's your baking day or whatever, I would probably move it out of the kitchen because it's going to get hot. Um, but just room temperature is fine. Mm, very good. Yep. Mm. All right, so we are going to put together the roofs. Um, you want to do like a little bit of kind of thinking about it beforehand. Like, so kind of place it on top and that looks like it's pretty good. And then place it that way. We're going to try to move it, see if maybe this edge works a little bit better. I think that edge a little bit better. I think so. Okay. And then as you see, this one is gonna go on top of this one, okay? Which means that for icing, you're gonna put some icing here on the top, and you're also gonna put some here and here on the bottom. You can put some here too, but it may not connect and that's okay. So here and then here. Okay, here mm -hmm. and here. Yes. All right. like we have two two holes now it's just <laughs> double double icing is it good to get um the actual piping bags or could you use a ziploc bag oh you definitely can use a ziploc bag and yeah up there like we just have a bunch of piping bags um so that's what we use but we've used ziploc bags before um you just put the icing in the Ziploc bag and uh, kind of gear it towards one of the corners. There we go. Get rid of some of the air and then snip the end. All right. Oh, okay, good. All right. This is actually gonna be able to slide down a little bit. If it globs like this at the top, should you? No, cause it's snow. Away? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. It is snow. I guess if you're super, if you're super neat and you want your things to look super neat, then yeah, sure, wipe it off. But no, it's snow. It's a, it's a snowy little lodge. Okay, so let's get the second one going. So same on this side then I guess, here and here. And then you can also, actually yeah, just here and here should be fine, just okay. the two edges, because we already got some royal icing on the top. There you go. I'm gonna twist the top yet. Yeah. Extra pressure. I'm learning. I'm learning. You are. You're doing very well. <laughs> you can also notice that I have tried to prop this up um, because while the house is supporting it to an extent, gravity is also trying to make it go down. So once again, having a good amount of glassware or something else you can use um, to improve the structure is a really good idea. Get that little glass out of the way. All right. So we're kind of going to try to just goop it together a little bit like this. There we go. Oop. Come back to this one. Slide it up a little bit. Okay. So now we gently prop it up with as much as we can. Should I do a taller glass on this side since these are short? Yeah, if you can do a taller glass, that'd be great. Okay. Do you have one over there? Mm, use that one. Okay. Oh, this one is unused, you're right. So this is probably one of the hardest parts because you wanna make sure that it's all sticking together. One thing you might notice is that there are some gaps in our, in our roof and that's okay. We can just add more royal icing um, either right now. So we got a little gap back here. Just add it along the seams. Or you can kind of let this set for a little bit 
and you can just add more later. There is no bad time to add royal icing. And also, um, you're talking about filling in the cracks and the places that don't exactly fit, but also uh, would you say that um, if we have a little little spot that doesn't look exactly like we want, we can always decorate over it, right? Oh, you can, like definitely. Like if you didn't like how messy this looked, you could make sure that you had like a bunch of Twizzlers or gummies or something and just do a shingle over it. You'll never see it, so it's totally fine. But we do need to let this set for as long as we possibly can, uh, at least three to four hours, um, but preferably overnight. So we're just gonna leave this alone. And fortunately, I've already made one that we can decorate. The magic of television. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we have given this gingerbread house a ton of time to set up. I think it's set up for at least 24 hours now. Give it a knock, see how you think it feels. Like give it a good it is it is very sturdy. It's it's not going anywhere. No, it's not. <laughs> I and I also made little mini trees which are not going anywhere. So if you do kind of want this to be more of like a toy or something that mm -hmm. you let your family and friends play with, like you can. Would this be a good part to get your children or the whole family, whoever, in to help out? Yeah. The decorating part. Yeah. If if you're you're super futzy and you want this to be like a centerpiece, maybe not. You still <laughs> want to go slow because you'll want to use the rest of your royal icing and really let it set up. But if it's just, you know, you're having fun with your friends and family, like go at it, do whatever you want. Make like, it's your time to decorate and have fun. Okay, so we're using crusting buttercream, right? Mm -hmm. To actually put the decorations on. We're probably gonna use a little bit of both because I like the goopy look of oh. royal icing. And if you don't mind, I thought maybe we could put some icicles on the edge. Oh, that would be great. So the royal icing looks more like snow. Yes. So just kind of goop it like this. See? That is super cute. All right, why don't you do that side? Okay, so right on the edge. Oh, we're about to. Yeah, it's totally fine if it drips. Like it dripped on my side, so. Okay. And these are icicles, so they're gonna drip. All mm -hmm. right. It's a good time to start reciting your favorite lines from Christmas movies, telling your friends and family that they'll shoot their eyes out and such. <laughs> yeah, I think that looks great. All right. But if you wanted to try to neaten something up, that's when you're gonna use the crusting icing. And crusting icing is called that because it should set up with a nice crust, so it's not gonna get all gooey and stuff. So like, for example, if we put some on the roof, if you have nice piping skills or wanna work on your piping skills, the crusting butter is what you're gonna to wanna to use. So you go, super cute. But we're gonna put something on that, aren't we? We are. What we're gonna do. <laughs> okay. So as far as the candies go, Really, you can't go wrong with just get whatever your your favorite candies are or whatever you think might make cute decorations. So yeah. what we're going to do is put licorice on the top of our roof. So the crusting buttercream is gonna be our glue mm -hmm. for our licorice piece. Now we've already trimmed these down to fit other parts of the roof. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a full, full piece across the top, I think. Yeah. And also buy extra candy because this is a fun time to snack yeah. as you go. We've already started stacking. You haven't seen it, but it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're just going to put it right on top? Yeah. That looks super cute. And give it a nice squish on down. Yeah. It looks really nice over here. Do you like it from over here? I do. There you go. And that's going to stick really well once you allow it to set. Uh, crusting buttercream, I would put it in the fridge for like 30 minutes after you're done because that'll really help it set up. But it's not going to run. I've had some crusting buttercream on the bottom out for like 12 hours now and it's kept in shape, so. Great. All right, what do you want to do next? Um, should we do the rest of our trim on the roof? Sure, yeah. Okay. okay. So we'll get some over here.
really add just a ton. <laughs> you just squish it on there? Yeah. Oh, that looks so cute already. <laughs> Hi. Bubble. <laughs> Here we go. Make sure I've got the right one. Yeah, little skinny ones. Yeah, that's a good squish. Right. And do we still want to add one right there or do we like the way it looks? What do you think? Um, what do you think? Since we have the icicles, I think it looks fine. I, I think it does too. Yeah. All right. And then do we want to put on some like um, decorations for the room? Sounds great. Okay. So if you do have different piping tips or you want something to be smaller, you probably should switch the piping tips right now. But I think this is a fairly good one. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna do something like that. Looks right. So you're making kind of like little shingles. Right? Yeah. And then you can decorate them however you want. You can leave them, you know, as little shingles if you want. Or I think you should definitely add some stuff. Okay. <laughs> but I'm gonna do this side while you do that. And this is more of like the communal part of making gingerbread houses because you know you can have somebody like me who's doing your royal icing not royal icing your crusting buttercream and then somebody else who is decorating so what do you think cindy should we put these um just kind of offset like here and here here yeah, maybe like where each of the little shingles sort of meet each other. Okay. Like the little decorations at the top. Just two different colors. Oh yeah, that'll be super cute. So we are using Skittles for these, um, which I'm totally fine with, but I know that some people don't always like to mix like chocolate and fruit <laughs> flavors. So you know, you could use m and m &Ms. You could use like the little Reese's minis or whatever they are. So you can just decide if there's like a particular food palette you really, really want. I can put some on if you want to give me some. Here, let's put them down there. All right, so since you've got some right here, you're gonna mimic your style. So, so far, what do you think of this gingerbread house? This has been a much better experience. <laughs> um, it's not collapsing. It's very sturdy. Um, it's super cute. I think I, you did a great job. It is very cute. Um, so I, I feel, feel much better about this. Yeah. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So do not be afraid. <laughs> So I think we're good, right? Yeah, you like it? Okay. Yeah, that looks so cute. What if we put like a little peppermint, like right here? At the, oop, that's real icing. That's fine, it'll work. <laughs> but the crusting buttercream will look a little bit better. So, oh, like oh. right on the peak? Yeah, like do you wanna, do yeah. you wanna put, or maybe like a spice drop at the peak? That would be cute too, yeah. What color are you thinking? Um, not red. Green, maybe? Green should be good. Yeah. Well, on the front, on the back? Yeah. yeah. 
Very cute. Okay. What's next? Where do you want to put on next? Um, let's see. Should we do our doors? Yeah. Oh, actually, before we do the doors, maybe. Ooh, posts. I'm going to do posts on the four corners of the house. Yeah. And then, what did you want to do for the doors? Um, let's do, we've got some chocolate bar pieces here. Um, those will be, let's do those for windows. How okay. about Kit Kat? Kit Kat will work. Okay, are you gonna, do you want like just a normal single door, like French door? Let's get fancy, let's do a double door, yeah. a French door. <laughs> So with this, should we squish it into the bottom there, into your um, crusting buttercream, or you want to do it above it? Mm, let's squish it down a little bit. Okay. So that's about the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And so squish it down. Straighten it down. up just a little bit. Yeah, give it a good straighten. A little bit at the bottom. What do you think? Do you like it? I like it. Do you want to add a doorknob? That would be very cute. Like two in the middle? Mm -hmm. Boop. 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 What do you think? I like it. That'll be a great trim. I think that looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put any Skittles on the door for the doorknob or do you like the white knobs? Um. Let's do a skittle. That might be cute. More green? Yeah. Okay. More green skittle. Boop boop. Oh yeah, that's really cute. Boop boop. Okay. Very nice. All right. Now windows, right? Couple windows. Yeah. So we're gonna do a little Hershey's for windows. Up down, side to side. What do you think? Um, let's do vertical. Okay. <laughs> All four or just like two? What do you think? I like two on both sides. Yes, yeah, that okay. sounds great. Boop. You just kind of uh, have the top be up underneath the edge a little bit. Ooh, yeah. Want to make some snow for the front? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to use some royal icing because I have plenty of royal icing. And it's just going to be a bunch of snow. So we're going to make us a nice snowy lawn. And then maybe a path or a walkway. Yes. Nice. And then, do you want like some gumdrops lining it? Yes. Okay. That would be great. All colors good or? Yeah, let's just do a variety. Okay. So, are we good to put our little tree and our little guy there? I think that will be the... Perfect finishing touch. All right, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, just squish it in. And then right here? Yes. There we go. Squish that in. Okay. All right. Do you want to add anything else to it? I think we have some peppermints. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I just got this, this little bag. I just filled it with peppermints and sort of beat it um, against something hard. A 
little sprinkle. What do you think of that? Oh yeah, that looks great. A little bigger piece back there. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So what do we think? Is this fully decorated? I think it is. Awesome. Um, about how long should we let this sit with the candy decorations? So since we did add some more royal icing, I would probably give it about an hour to sit. But at this point, since we do have buttercream, we do have chocolate, I would also put it in the fridge to chill for that time. Because, you know, you don't, chocolate can melt. You don't, like, there's still gravity so things can slide. So this is a perfect time to pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour. Awesome. All right, so this is our finished gingerbread house. What do you think? I think it is gorgeous. I I can't even believe that I helped make this. Yeah, but you did a great job. Like, this was you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's super cute. And do you think, like, you've got like, some pretty good tips going forward? Like, maybe you and your mom could make one Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like we could definitely... Uh, uh, accomplish this if we are just patient yes. patience is key patience is that key. is what I've learned mm -hmm. um and I've also learned that icing covers a multitude of of sins yes. so this you can cover up ice uh any little boo-boos <laughs> with with icing or candy decor but yes I definitely encourage anyone who is um afraid of of making their own this was much much better experience this time so thank you Sunny. you're welcome and like uh, we mentioned earlier we'll have all of um, all the recipes for the gingerbread for the royal icing and for the cresting buttercream in the comments uh you can also if you have a question like i've been working on this and i didn't quite understand it or i've always had a problem with this like ask that question and I'm totally happy to help. I bet Diane could help now too. Uh, and yeah, we'll be happy to help make sure that your gingerbread houses are as magical as you want them to be. And also, if you do create your own gingerbread house, we would love for you to drop a photo of it in the comments of this video or post it on to the PSPL Facebook page. Um, we wanna see what you all are creating this holiday season. Yeah. So hopefully we've inspired you and we wish everyone a happy holidays and a happy new year. Hi, this is Sandy again, and I am going to show you how to make royal icing that you can use to make your very own gingerbread house. Uh, royal icing is typically what you use to construct gingerbread houses, but you can also use it if you wanted to uh, like make especially frosted and ornamental looking cookies. Royal icing is actually pretty darn easy to make. All you really need is a couple of eggs, specifically the egg whites, and some powdered sugar or confectioner's sugar. I always like to add a little bit of almond or vanilla extract in, and then some people do recommend about a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. If you whip up the eggs uh, really well though, you don't necessarily need the cream of tartar. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna separate our eggs, specifically the yolks and the whites. I recommend that you make sure that your eggs are about room temperature at this point. Uh, you can, you can uh, use cold eggs, um, but they just set up a little bit better if they're ready for room temperature. also use your hand, which honestly sometimes is a little bit easier than if you're being careful like this. You can save the egg yolks for later, like specifically if you're trying to make a pudding or cream. One thing I did notice is I got a little, a little bit of the shell right here. Pump it out. A little bit of the shell right here. I did wash my hands beforehand, and I do recommend that you, of course, wash your hands before you get started baking as well. There we go. 
not the cleanest journal, but it's okay. So once you've got your egg whites separated from the yolks, you can just put it in your mixer. <coughs> you could also use a whisk or um, a hand mixer, but a sand mixer like this just goes a little bit faster. And then you turn it on. You're going to want to whip it on high for about two minutes. It's going to froth up, get really white and light. It should also like triple in size. you couldn't hear me I said that you want to sorry it was very loud in case you couldn't hear me I said that you want to whisk these on high for about two minutes until they get quite stiff and fluffy and they're gonna be about three times as uh, as voluminous as they were normally I wouldn't stop the process so I encourage you not to uh, but you're gonna smell you're just going to let it keep whisking, maybe at about medium speed, and you're going to add your um, and you're going to add a little bit of your extract if that's what you're using, your cream of tartar if you use that, and definitely your powdered sugar. I do about a third of a cup at once, and I do about two two and a third cups. So let's do that. As you can see, it's starting to come together as icing, um, but I do recommend pushing down, uh, scraping the sides, and also maybe getting yourself a glass of water at this point because it is very powdery and it can sort of tickle your throat. I've added about one and a third cups of sugar. I am going to add a little bit more because you do want it uh, pretty stiff, uh, but I don't add nearly as much as a lot of recipes suggest because I feel that too much powdered sugar gives you a strange mouthfeel. So, you know, add the powdered sugar to taste. I recommend uh, for this recipe at least two cups, um, but I've heard people say you can go up to four. Don't really recommend it. But let's get back to whisking.
right, I've added in about two cups of powdered sugar. Um, as you might be able to tell, it's got a very stiff peak on it. So that means that it's setting pretty well. You can do a little bit more whisking if you want. I am gonna finish scraping down the sides of this and whisk it for just a little bit longer. Uh, you don't wanna to do too terribly much because it is possible to separate um, and then kind of ruin your, your royal icing. But you do want to make sure that it is well whisked um, because whisking um, activates these certain like proteins in egg whites, um, which stretches them out into glue. So essentially all the wicks, uh, all the whisking and the movement is what creates a binding agent within the egg whites. So let's just finish this up. just think that is the perfect consistency for royal icing. Uh, it's nice and gloopy. It's got this sort of meringue feel to it. Uh, or if you've ever made homemade marshmallows um, before they set, it's got a little bit of that kind of feel to it, which, you know, makes sense. These are made of very similar materials. So getting everything as much as I can off the whisks, and there you see it. And now I'm just going to take my little little spatula and I'm going to put it into a piping bag. Uh, I use actual piping bags which you can buy at like the grocery store like at Kroger or something but you can also use Ziploc bags. Um, if you have a large batch of something like this you might want to use a gallon bag uh, but otherwise a lot of times you can use sandwich bags and you just sort of position it so that the bottom or a corner is in your tall glass. Having a tall glass definitely helps. And then you start taking big old globs and just kind of putting it into whatever your piping bag is. You can, of course, um, use this, you know, without a piping bag, just like spreading it on stuff with like a fork or a spoon or a knife or whatever. Uh, but a piping bag can just kind of help control um, what you're, you're piping out um, so you don't get as gloopy. Starting to get a little bit gloopier, sort of settle a little bit. It's still got a little bit going. You don't want to overfill the bag if you can help it. Definitely not a neat process, but we got it all out. Okay. So now you kind of pull it up, pull it out, and you start squishing it to the bottom of your bag. At this point, it might be sort of difficult to do so because there is this air bubble. So you're going to want to get some scissors and cut at least a small hole so you can get the air and be able to squish it down. You can leave this uh, tightly wrapped in your fridge for like a week if you want. I definitely recommend um, refrigerating it when you're not using it uh, and also refrigerating it between usage. Uh, it will get sort of runny uh, if you don't, whereas keeping it chilled will keep it this nice consistency so you can use it on all your gingerbread houses and cookies. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about how to make royal icing, because uh, sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly, feel free to comment on the video and ask. 
Uh, the recipe will also be in the comments on the video, so if you couldn't hear me over my extremely loud KitchenAid, that's totally fine. We'll have it. Uh, and yeah, so I hope you found this helpful. Bye-bye! And today, we are going to be presenting Gingerbread, gingerbread House. House. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Gingerbread SOS. No.